It's a very good bill, Mr Speaker, and I uh, commit it to the House. I call the Honourable Member Ian Lees Galloway. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. A full Speaker. call, Mr Galloway. It's a full not, call. It's not ah, split. Excellent. Very good. Um, Mr Speaker, the, uh, the copyright parallel importing of films amendment bill is uh, one of those one of those challenging issues, um, and, I, and I know there would have been a lot of conversation at the, at the select committee. Uh, you've, got, you've got really good arguments, both for and against carrying on um, the, uh, with implementing this amendment to carry on uh, with the, um, the ban on, on parallel importing of, of films um, for a period after they're released at the cinema. Uh, on the one hand, you know, there's, there's the argument that Actually, the industry should have uh, made the transition in, in the 10 years uh, that it was given uh, to make the transition to, um, to the world, you know, the, the business model uh, in the digital world, um, and, and that, that that period is over and it's time for them to, to make the change, and that by, by not uh, requiring the industry to make that change, uh, we're essentially um, diminishing choice for uh, consumers and potentially um, unnecessarily increasing costs for consumers. On the other hand, though, uh, is the fact that um, for many uh, provincial cinemas in particular, that the cost of um, completing that transition has been prohibitive, prohibitive uh, and they, they have asked for a little bit more time to be able to do that, and those provincial communities would be losing something very significant if their local cinema had to close down. And look, like the government, we are concerned um, that uh, you know, people are exiting the provinces um, at a tremendous rate. We are concerned that many New Zealanders are, um, are flooding over to Australia. There's this, this massive exodus of people out of the country uh, as the economic opportunities in the regions have been stifled by the lack of um, a, a comprehensive program of regional economic development from the government. Uh, and so we share those concerns with them, and we wouldn't want there to be any other reason for people to leave the provinces and to go to the major urban centres or even, um, as we know they're doing, leave the provinces to leave the country altogether and head over the Tasman to Australia and further afield. So it's in, it's in the full knowledge of, of trying to um, achieve that sensible balance uh, that, that Labor, uh, with reservations of course, does support uh, this copyright parallel importing of films amendment bill. Um, we, it was a Labor government that originally passed uh, the Copyright Parallel Importation of Films and Onus of Proof Amendment Act in 2003, which is the, the original legislation that, that, that gave the industry uh, that 10 year grace period in which to, um, in which to make the transition. Uh, and it's because um, those provisions in that bill are, are set to expire very soon uh, that, and, and, the, and this bill continues on with those provisions. Um, we, we, we agree that um, as, part of a, as part of the agreement with the industry uh, to carry on that transition period uh, is that the delay for the importation of films um, has been reduced from, uh, from nine months down to five months. And that, that will certainly assist uh, with, with bringing those films onto the market in other formats and in ways that might be more accessible to people. Um, I think my colleague uh, David Clark actually touched on you know, one of the issues that really is at the heart of this because we're, we're, what we're talking about is the cost of being able to access films um, and, and that being part of the cost of living and the cost of things that we expect to be, that we expect Kiwi families to be able to take for granted, and of course, on you know, the, the, we, with the cost of living, there, there is um, there is a, a, a balance to the equation. There's, there's two sides to the equation. One is what things cost, but the other is actually how much money people have and the resources people have to be able to meet the cost of living. And what we've seen in, in recent years is the cost of living in a number of ways going up and up and up, whether it be people's power bills, uh, whether it be the cost of accommodation, uh, whether it be the cost of fuel, 
uh, all and, and the cost of food, the cost of clothing, the cost of uh, um, school books, and shoes, uh, and the, the basics of life uh, going up and up and up. But wages, of course, not um, keeping up with that increase in cost. And so, um, whilst on the one hand we, we should be doing everything we can to keep the cost of what is pretty basic entertainment and something that everybody growing up and living in New Zealand should be able to take for granted, we should keep those costs down, we should be also looking at how we ensure people have the resources and able to be able to carry out you know, a, a basic standard of living or to achieve and experience a basic standard of living in New Zealand. And that is, of course... That requires decent wages, uh, and you know, on, on this side of the house, we have reservations about this legislation. But we would also make sure that um, you know, family um, pay packets were augmented with things like increasing the minimum wage to $15 an hour and supporting uh, the living wage campaign. Uh, so, um, Mr. Mr. Speaker, um, you know, this, uh, there's an, in many ways this legislation is a balancing act. And you know, I, I take some issue with the Greens' position. You know, it's all very well to be able to take the, the purest view. And, and a, a lot of what's behind the Greens' argument is perfectly valid. But they've got to actually look at what it means for people's lives in a real sense. And I encourage the Greens to get out of Wellington, get out of Wellington Central, and actually go and talk to some of the provinces uh, and the provincial communities that would be impacted should we not pass this legislation. Um, it, it, you know, it's, it's not ideal. We accept that it's not ideal, but we have to think about the practicalities of the legislation that we pass and what things will mean for people in real terms. And if we held the green view, which uh, on, uh, yeah, in a purist sense is, is an understandable view, the fact is cinemas in regional and provincial communities would close. It's as simple as that. And, and so it's all very well to have um, an intellectual argument about these things, but we have to think about the practicalities as well. So uh, there is um, growing concern uh, that um, the kinds of bans on parallel importing that are included in this legislation may be something that we're going to see more and more of. And, and, and I know that a lot of people in the community have a concern that that would come with the Trans-Pacific Partnership. One of the big problems, of course, about trying to take a view on the Trans-Pacific Partnership is how little information we have received from the government about uh, what it is that they're negotiating and what that will look like. Now, I understand, I, I know that what government members would say is that in the past, when, when Labor governments have negotiated free trade agreements, uh, that they haven't you know, handed out all the details. But what we did do is take a more inclusive approach. So we made sure uh, that um, organisations like the CTU and organisations like Greenpeace that... Um, Sorry? No, so that organisations like the CTU and organisations... Like, I, appreci I appreciate the, um, uh, the, the words from the, um, uh, the government junior whip. Uh, that um, organisations like the CTU and Greenpeace were kept in, in, in the fold and, and had an understanding of the kinds of issues that were being dealt with during free trade agreements. Now, the, the Trans-Pacific Partnership is much more than a free trade agreement. It goes well beyond um, simply talking about um, tariffs that are applied to commodities. And, 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 and I think probably why the government is experiencing so much resistance from the wider public is because they have really taken that withholding of information to an extreme. So to the point where people are starting to feel as though it's becoming quite an anti-democratic process and people are feeling locked out of the process. And when you lock people out of the process, there is a lack of understanding. There is fear of uh, what that might mean. And certainly there is concern that the kind of ban on parallel importing uh, that, that is uh, um, part of this legislation will be applied to a range of other products uh, that, that people, um, people enjoy the low prices that come with parallel importing, and I think particularly of, of you know, again, clothing uh, and, and the, the basic necessities of life, where the price has come down because we have had the ability to use parallel importing in New Zealand and, and there is fear out there in the community as to what the impact could be if, if such bans were inc included in uh, a treaty that New Zealand signs up to. 
so, sir, um, we call on the government to be a lot more transparent around its negotiations uh, to, um, uh, and, and to work with the public uh, on an agreement that we, you know, we understand could have a lot of benefits, but it does carry a lot of risks as well. Uh, and, so, um, and so naturally there is fear out there in the community. And the government could handle this in a much more constructive uh, and collaborative way with the public than what it has been doing. So uh, to summarise, the Labour Party does support this bill. We have uh, significant reservations about it, but we understand that for um, rural and provincial and, and, and regional communities uh, to be able to carry on with that basic right of being able to go out and have a family night at the movies, this is necessary, but this is the final opportunity for the industry to make that transition uh, that it needs to make and to start living in the digital world in the 21st century. Sir. I call the honourable member.